Look, it's been two years and you've seen all the overpowered game-breaking and one-shot builds, but now it's time to put your skills to the test with a build that is only for the most elite, Hardcore Tarnished. You will be relying on evasion and only using consumables, but that doesn't mean you won't be doing some pretty impressive damage to bosses. We will be relying on Faith, Dexterity and Arcane for our Giant's Flame pots, status inflicting pots and our throwing daggers. Our armor is minimal, giving us a light load roll, but also making this build even more depraved. Bam, bam. We have beefy talismans with options to boost the damage we do, and I simply have to put the following disclaimer right here, right now. Only the most legendary amongst you will still be here at the end of this video. My fellow tarnished, I give you the alchemist. A challenge build. Okay, let's start with the class and stats so we can put ourselves to the ultimate test. If you could leave a like and subscribe, that would be awesome, thank you. I started with the Bandit class. We have Vigor at 40, Mind at 11, Endurance at 15, Strength at 9, Dexterity at 50. This gets us the best return on investment for boosting our throwing items and helps boost lightning pot damage when we need them. Intelligence at 9, Faith at 70. This will boost our Giant's Flame pot damage nicely. And Arcane at 30. This gives us a nice 50% boost to status buildups like Bleed, Poison and Sleep. Okay, let's have a look at our gear. I have an Urtreed Seal for our buff incantations, Flame Grant Me Strength and Golden Vow. The reason for this seal is that it doesn't weigh anything, keeping us at light load. As for armor, we have the Jarhead of course, boosting our consumables, and then we have the Depraved Perfumers Gloves and Trousers, because, you know, we are being Depraved Perfumers. Ha! <laughs> Who needs chest armor? Maybe you can put your shirt back on? Let's look at the talismans next. We have the Companion Jar, boosting our pot damage by 20%, the Perfumers Talisman, boosting our perfume damage by 15%, the Fire Scorpion Charm, boosting our fire damage, and the Ritual Sword Talisman, boosting our damage when we are at full health. In the Flask of Wondrous Physic, we have the Faith Not Crystal Tear, boosting our Faith stat by 10, and the Flame Shrouding Crack Tear, boosting our fire damage by 20%. This also stacks with the Fire Scorpion Charm. Now, this brings us on to our pots and consumables, as the above talismans and Wondrous Physic items can be changed depending on our attack loadout. The loadout just mentioned works really nicely for Giant's Flame Pots, which do fire damage and scale with Faith. And we'll also be using Spark Aromatics, which actually do fire damage as well. But wait! We don't get Giant Flame Pots until a very late game, and what about enemies that are highly immune to fire? Well, for fire pots obtained more easily, you can look at respecking faith to the minimum needed for Flame Grant Me Strength and Golden Vow, and then put the rest of the points into Strength, as fire pots and red main fire pots scale with Strength. Then you can change your Wondrous Physic to the Strength Not Crystal tier. When it comes to using Lightning Pots and Ancient Dragon Pots, you will benefit from the Dexterity being at 50. And once again, you switch to Lightning Shrouded Crack tier and the Dexterity Not Crystal tier. When switching up your Talismans, just use the Lightning Scorpion Charm if using Lightning Pots. If you aren't using Perfumes, then you can look at dropping the Perfumer's Talisman to something like the Old Lord's Talisman to keep your buffs up, or the Ritual Shield Talisman to take less damage from that first hit you are likely to take. Of course, we also have access to Throwing Daggers. Cookery are really nice as you get a nice boost to its bleed buildup thanks to the Arcane stat. Fan Daggers have a nice spread for up close hits, Throwing Daggers in general can really help with status buildups like Poison and Bleed, and help us chip away at enemies' health. Okay, now let's talk about the hard part, the combat. I have been having some intense, nail-biting fun fighting bosses with this build, and here is another disclaimer. I'm not even sure if all bosses are even possible to beat with this build, but I want to know who amongst you can take down the most difficult bosses. So depending on the boss, your loadout will vary. For the most part, the combat of the Alchemist is much like an MMO, where you carefully go through rotations of items in order to make sure your attacks do the optimum damage. So here you can see I start by using an oil pot, then I put them to sleep, then I buff up. I throw a Swarm Pot to proc bleed, and then I throw my Giant's Flame Pot with full health for optimum damage. 
It's an intense way to play and you really need to use a mix of your pouch and item slots to make sure you can cycle through the items without too much confusion. A simple rule of thumb is if using fire pots, always use an oil pot first to do more damage. This build really is a challenge in every single way. You have to craft the pots you need, which means having the recipes and farming the materials. Each boss will need careful thought in regards to how you are going to inflict the most amount of damage and the right kind of damage. You have to be careful not to run out of consumables, and the question is, are some bosses going to be impossible to beat? Let's see. At the very least, if you play this build for an extended period of time, you are going to have every boss's dodge timing down and you will become a pro in evasive maneuvers. I would like to give a huge shout out to Ashenite Fess for this depraved build. What a return to form. I will link as much of the consumables information and materials as I can in the description. Before I play out my epic win against the Godskin duo, let me know how you find this build in the comments. What would you do differently and what build would you like to see next? If you give this a go, please share your journey with me either in the comments or in my Discord server linked in the description. Anyway, check out this nail-biting battle between the Alchemist and the Godskin duo. All the best guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!